What's up, friends? This is Steve, your neighborhood CRT expert. And today, I'm going to jump into the pricing. That's right, recent pricing for any pro CRT monitors. And this is a, a segment that I've featured in the past you know, six months. I've really been tracking sales of pretty much pro, any pro video monitor that happens. And the ones that I'm really taking a look at are those that are on eBay because they are very trackable. And anybody who wants to go back and find any of these individual sales should be able to do so by just doing eBay search history and sold listings for the specific time period. So again, today's video, we're going to be looking at specifically March and April 2020, because I want to see what kind of uh, reaction the market has taken to our quarantine situation. So if gamers are locked up in their house, are they spending more money on pro CRTs to make sure they can finally play with one? Well, let's see what the statistics say. So first off, let me move myself a little bit back down in the picture here, and we'll get started on this presentation. So again, here are the details. Let me move myself a little bit out in case you want to read them, but it is we're looking at pro CRT monitor sales on eBay, mostly in North America. Okay, the sales data does reach between March, all of March, up to May 5th. I even went a little bit beyond May 1st, so we've got a couple extra days of data in there. And then sales, most of them are going to include shipping costs. Um, I did mark on there if they were a local pickup, so you'll be able to tell which ones were locally picked up. They do not include taxes, and that's something I want to say a quick second about because over the last couple of uh, months, for sure, I've noticed on any of the sales that I've done that eBay has charged uh, sales tax for your area sometimes for the monitor. So that's if you're already paying a high price for the monitor, then you got to think about that too. Is it, am I going to be taxed, or if I'm getting this transported across some kind of line of a uh, border? that's outside of the country, am I going to have to pay a tariff? Most likely. So check those out. See what your normal tax rate is for your area. And then I'm going to have notes on some of the monitors that were sold, highlight some specific monitor sales. And I didn't list this on the details, but then we're going to look at everything at the end, and we're going to see you know, what's actually happening in the market. I'm going to give you some more tips that if you're looking for a monitor, what's the best way to get the best price on one? And then we're going to keep going, and uh, that'll be it for this, today's episode. So First thing, let's jump into some sales data right away. And the first thing I want to look at here, oh, excuse me, real quickly, is the sales data for Ikigami CRT monitors. And again, I want to say something else. I've highlighted like smaller monitors in the past. I did not go through if they were not, you know, 14 inches or 13 inches or larger. And if they did not have... Uh, pretty much RGB. I left them off this month's statistics, okay? So let's just go back into this Ikigami data. Okay, you have five sales of noteworthiness during that time period for Ikigami. And the first ones are just some standard, not, you know, just regular RGB monitors. What I will warn people is that these ones are not going to... Um, look the same as like, you know, these higher, this higher end one. The one I have highlighted in the middle is the highest end one. And it is the HTMR. And that is, or the HTM 1517R. And that is the model that's pictured over here on the side. That is a high definition or multi-format monitor. So it'll go from 240p all the way up to 1080i. So it's on the level with, you know, your 14L5 PVM. And then, of course, any BVM that is a multi-format also, this is, that's this version. The other ones, you know, they're going for about $300 plus. I mean, the, the prices are all over the place on this one because a lot of people just aren't aware of what they are. So this is a monitor you can get a deal on, but you have to be careful. I will warn you because some of the monitors just don't, you know, it, some of them can be really old. And um, I don't personally feel like the Shadow Mass Tube uh, ages as well as a Trinitron tube. And what I mean is, is um, I just uh, personally, I, I think the Trinitrons can look a little bit better after, you know, even after 20, 30 years. And sometimes uh, you get a little bit more washed out look like earlier, you know, I, at least in my experience with some, some shadow mass tubes. I'm not saying you're going to have that problem with this, but I've noticed on my old 
which are come from the '80s. My old Ikigamis just they just don't look any good, that good. But any monitor from the '80s would look probably bad. Okay, so this one is our um, HTMR sale that was five hundred dollars. Okay, this was the actual sale right here, uh, five hundred dollar sale. And I brought this up because I thought this monitor should have easily sold for a little bit more than five hundred with shipping. But you could see what the issue was. Uh, it said it worked fine. It wasn't tested. But when they had their patterns blot up, it was all red. So it looked like just the red gun was firing. I don't really know anything about this monitor because I haven't had the pleasure of working on this specific version. So maybe it was an easy fix for anybody who owns one of these and they thought they'd get another one. But I just wanted you to know that there was a reason that the price was $500 because normally this monitor would sell for at least uh, two, dollars $300 more if it was in really good condition. Now, I did try to scourge the internet and find some anything noteworthy of a JVC monitor sale. And uh, so some of you may know that there are some JVC monitors that are pretty good. Uh, this was really the only decent one that I could find worth noting. And it was a DTV 170 or 1710 CG again a completely multi-format monitor that will go all the way from 240 to 1080i. And this one actually was fully loaded. It had uh, cards for um, the original RGB card and you know S-video and analog video card with it and even maybe an SDI input on there. So this is a very good monitor. Again, um, the price is 850 because I don't know the exact price of it. It was listed for like $1,200, but a best offer was accepted, and eBay removed the um, exact amount of a best offer. So I was guessing that this would have gone for about $850 because I don't feel like somebody would have just put a really low bid in there and gotten approved. It did include shipping, it said. So anyway, that's about it for the non-Sonys. There really wasn't a lot of movement, at least of anything that was quality. I couldn't find really any good Panasonics that were sold. Uh, and that, that has more to do with just the market not being there where there's no more inventory on a lot of those. And uh, we're really running low on them. So another great PVM that I have featured is the Olympus OEV uh, model and we've got sales data here for the Olympus and I'm going to go through here and show you um, what we've got. We've got three 143 sales which are 14 inch monitors and those are the same as a 14 M2 MDU medical version and then the 203 which is the 20 M2 MDU medical version but um, I wanted to show you there is one outlier here that is extremely cheap for an eBay sale, and that was this March 8th one that I underlined, and that was for $250. It was the only one out of any of these monitors that was game tested. It was sold by a gamer, but it was a local pickup in New Mexico. So you'll notice a lot of times in here when there are outliers like that, it is because they're locally done and locally picked up. Some other information of importance here. Uh, these Olympus monitors most of the time came from recycling facilities, I could tell. They were sold by recyclers, so that means they came off of lab or medical equipment. They were never used for gaming, most likely, up till you know, somebody buys them now. Um, and they're largely untested beyond being tur turned on for power. So keep an eye on these Olympuses. I always do because they tend to... They're really great monitors, the same thing, and you'll see how much less these are actually selling for uh, than the M2 line directly from Sony. And this is just a little bit more. You could see what the pictures looked like on the listing. Sometimes you just get a picture from the front, and you wouldn't even see the screen turned on. And other times you'd get uh, pictures like this where it would be some wacky color green on that picture. So that was, for example, the $400 uh, sale, $390 sale of the uh, Olympus monitor. That's that one. So just some information there about that. Now we're going to go into some BVM sales. And to be quite honest with you, there weren't again a ton of sales there was just you know we're running low on the inventory of these higher quality monitors which i'll speak to more at the end but we did have a colossal sale on ebay and that was for this d24 one 
or I W U monitor, and that was three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars, and it was local pickup only. So, just so you know that. And then we've got two fourteen F five U's. One was best offered at three seventy five. The other was four sixty. So again, that is an, a completely analog BVM, and very nice uh, fourteen inch BVM. But you're only going to get 480i and 240p out of that model. And so that's kind of why the, the price is a little bit lower and matches more along the lines of 14-inch PVM. Now, the last one here is a 20F1U. It was best offered, uh, but that one was listed for way high. I mean, that was the shipping cost total was 21.48. So there's 20 inches and above. Especially on BVMs, it's really difficult to find unless you get a local sale or um, something else like that similar. It's, it's really getting difficult to find a good uh, low, you know, any kind of low price on anything over 14 inches, especially in a good working BVM. Now, let's look at some of that M2 data that I was mentioning before when it came to that Olympus OEV. And uh, that is the 14 M2 and the 14 M4U sales. These just generally have a ton of sales, uh, but Again, there's still a few of these monitors on eBay, but the, the, we're really getting lower and lower and lower on the number available each you know, quarter. Um, the, there's become less and less and less of these listed on eBay. So during this time frame, we had nine total sales of the 14-inch M series monitor, four M2Us, or five M4Us, and that's the price. There wasn't a huge price difference between the two. Those are the average prices, 400 30 to 460. Now, what does that mean? That means, I'll tell you exactly, I've got my list here. Um, we got one that went for $334, one that went for $548, one that went for $358, and one that went $480. That's all the M2 sales, all four of them. So that'll tell you that you're going to be paying uh, the lowest prices were $334 for a shipped one and barely tested just to power on, or one that might be fully tested and has a good listing going for as high as $548. So that's a big price difference there. So you definitely can save some money. But again, the lowest price M2 that was sold, 14-inch, uh, was $334 shipped that was working. And then the M4Us, there were some uh, lower-priced sales on there that kind of threw the average off a little bit. So I'm going to show you because and then there were some that went crazy high. So then a $460 average out of five sales, we had a $503 sale, a $450 sale. There was a $270 sale of a 14M4U that was a local pickup. And then there was one that went on there for $240, okay? So that was an instance where somebody had it listed and just didn't know what it was and had it even power tested. I never saw the listing but it went for only $240. So there's an example of somebody that was just patient, watched eBay, found one for cheap, bought it $240 for 14 and for you as a steal because a month later in April, one, the very last sale was $732. $732 for a shipped 14 and for you that was not restored and it wasn't sold by either myself or Save on Pat. It was just another uh, actually used audio video equipment company. So there's an idea of the uh, M4Us. I will mention quickly that is a price increase over last quarter's numbers of almost 30%, especially on those 14 M2Us. The last average price for those was under $300 shipped for one. There was tons of them sold. And again, I think the price was about $290. So you got a big jump there, especially on the M2s. But there's still an opportunity sometimes to find one. It's just far, few and far between. All right, so let's take a look at some other Sony PVMs that are 14 inches that were RGB that sold. So we got 1350s. There was a couple sales of that monitor. And uh, they averaged 290. So that's an, that's. It's still a pretty good monitor in the 50 series, but it's very much the lowest end of the 50 series. So you're going to get a lower TV line count. I believe that's a 450 line tube on that monitor. Still does RGB, uh, but it doesn't have as many of the features as the 51Q or the 54Q, which both sold for surprisingly about the same price. So that whole family 
of 50 series. I couldn't find any 53s of note that were uh, clean and sold, but there you've got another seven monitors selling for between 270 and 294, and that's that's a pretty even where the place was. The lowest, I will tell you, where there was a uh, 1354Q that actually sold online shipping was $178, so that was extremely cheap. It's the best deal on that one. And then there was a 1351Q that was sold locally for $130, so that was a pretty good deal for whoever wound up getting that one. Some other things to note, there wasn't, I haven't very seen as many L2 series during this quarter. Only one 14-inch uh, sold for 350 makes sense. And then there were some 14N6 use that are selling for actually more than the 51 Qs and 54 Qs. And um, honestly, I'd prefer the 54 Q to the N6U if you had a choice between the two and they were in the same shape. The only thing is, is the N6 is a newer monitor most of the time than those uh, Qs and 50 series. So take that into consideration. All right. Let me get myself out of the way, make sure you could see all this information. We've got the 20 M2s and the 20 M4U sales data. These are the exact sales of these two monitors. First up, we got five sales of the 20 M2. So again, um, when people say, you know, hey, how much are these costed? This is how much they're costed. You know, just because you don't, um, you know, you think the value might be too high, it doesn't matter. It's that's this is literally hard data. So the 20 M2U, let's just look at these quickly. 647, 806, 426, 457, 599, and 8. Well, that's all 20 M4Us, but there's a big price difference. The lowest, 426, the highest, 806. And again, none of them were restored, but this is all just a diff. This is a difficult thing to do, ship a big monitor. And um, really, anybody who gets a sony pvm 20 m2 for less than 450 dollars and it arrives shipped and fine you consider yourself to have gotten a steal or a great deal uh, because honestly it costs a lot of money to safely pack and ship these so these people did not really make any money um, or not much money unless they got the monitors for pretty much nothing which is a lot of times what happens with these resellers on ebay and let's look quickly at the last Three, which are the M4s, which is the 800 line all analog monitor from Sony. And they have three sales there, the lowest being the, mo uh, the last one at 534, one before that for almost twice that, and then a local pickup for $850. So this one was an outlier too, where someone got one for $534, a cre an incredible deal when you consider that one sold just two to three or three weeks, four weeks earlier for almost twice as much. Keep an eye on those. Again, that's very condition heavy and you don't want to buy um, one and, and spend that kind of money for something that's just not in good shape. So make sure that if you are looking at those, you end up with a good and one in shape, but uh, just some really incredible price numbers there on that 20 M4 and M2U. And again, those have gone up um, significantly since there's not as many sales data on the monitors has been in the past, just a couple of large sales really uh, kicks the average up on the price. So here's some other finishing up with these analog only Sony PVM sales. We've got a 1354Q, had three sales, average $510. They were all pretty much right around that number. 2030s, prices of 2030s surprisingly has gone up. And that, uh, I don't really know why, but it's, uh, maybe something to do with the aesthetics, but you're looking at it easily now an over $600 average um, on ge in general on eBay for a 2030. Now, 2030s, and I, you can find them generally. Sometimes one will pop up for $400 or so used to, but now uh, they're definitely worth the three sales for an average of 600 and then I wanted to point out these larger monitor sales. We had three of them, a 2950 and 22530s. The 22530s went for about the same price, nearly $670 was the average. I mean, uh, one was uh, 600, one was 750. And the 750 one did include some speakers. So 
they were both local though no shipping on there and even the sellers would not ship that monitor same thing with the 2950 950 dollar local sale still really difficult to get those monitors and if you find one in your area that works it's worth grabbing all right here's some of my favorites the multi formats let me get myself out of the way just so you can see all the data here first off this is the 1405 and it is by far my, well, one of my favorite 14-inch uh, PVMs or even BVMs because it has such a beautifully small form factor. You'll notice, put, I'm about to do some research or, you know, show you some videos where I'm comparing all the multi-formats that Sony made uh, because now I have them all. And you'll be blown away by how much smaller in just frame size the 14L5 is compared to like the A series or even the D series BVMs. So that's going to be a great video. But here's the L5s, man. April and early May was a huge month for the L5s. Five sales. Um, let's go through the numbers here because people have been telling me that they think this is just uh, a $300 monitor in my discussion boards, but they're, they're way off for, you know, retail on this multi-format monitor, um, the price has gone up. April 1st, 550. April 25th, 609. April 25th also was the 393, which was the video I did about my purchase of my 14L5. And that was negotiated down from about $600 list price. 14L5 again on April 27th for 500. And then another one on May 7th for $770. So again, they're all over the place between 500 and almost $800. So I do have another listing on here for a four to, or an L5, and I'll show you here soon. But it's not included on these data, and there is a specific reason for that because it was restored. So let's get into some restored monitors and uh, show you some highlighted sales. Now, everybody here might recognize this one. This was a restoration project. I did, and it sold. It was a Sony PVM 14 N6U that is 100% recapped. 100, or well, there was one cap I didn't replace because I couldn't get it. So it's 99.5% recapped and uh, fully calibrated, great condition. I even installed a newer tube in it. And so um, 500 people are like, oh my goodness, $520. Well, that's still a um, new tube. Uh, calibration and uh, fully recapped it that still is a good deal so um, that's a lot of effort put into it and again if you even buy one of these they go for you know three hundred dollars and then you're adding all again what I just told you most of them won't have the newer tube in them and they won't be professionally checked out and they won't be professionally recapped so there's the example on that sale. I've got a couple other ones to highlight here. Like I said, there was a 14L5 that sold for $874. And that was from our buddy, Mr. Save on Pat himself. That's the listing right here. You can tell his listings all look high quality and they look the same. Um, so, but just make sure that if you do get on there and find a listing, it looks like this, that it's coming from Save on Pat because there has been a uh, bit of a shadiness going on where people are like copying his listings and listing them online for quick sales in these high-end monitors, especially out of the country. Somebody from Canada was doing it and kept getting called out for it. But, it, it, you know, we'll talk about that in a second, but I just want to highlight this. This one was just professionally serviced by Save on Pat. And again, the 14L5 for $874 shipped. And of course, he had a couple of other monitors, a 20L5 too. So another one of the greats, and this one sold for $1,650, and that was a local pickup. So no shipping there, $1,650. So when people you know, say, how much is a 20L5? And someone's like, well, a good price for a recapped one is $1,000. Well, honestly, you're off, okay? A good price for a recapped one shipped, brought to you, is going to be at least $2,000 now, okay? There's just a huge limit on the number of those 20L5s. And currently, uh, even me, I have a list of people that are willing to pay $2,000 a piece for them. I just don't have the monitors. They, there's literally a list of two or three people that want them so badly. 
and I just don't have them available myself, or I would provide it for them. And that's uh, so. So a 20L5, you know, honestly, if I found a 20L5, you know, that was for a thousand bucks, and somebody had them, and they were restored, I'd probably buy them just so I could get them to these other people that are on my list of people, and that would be, uh, you know, a great profit. So there's not any reason um, to go through and think that you're going to, I mean, if you find one for, you know, a thousand bucks and it's working good, you should grab it. All right, and then finally, we've got the highlighted BVM sale. That is this huge BVM, this D24E1U that was uh, WU that came with the remote, was fully loaded, reserviced, refurbished by Save on Pat, and again, $3,750, and there was no shipping in that, so that was a local pickup out in California, and I just love seeing that kind of a sale because it just doesn't happen very often, especially on eBay, and especially one that you know is going to be legitimate, and that's what this is when it involves Save on Pat. So those are the huge, huge restoration sales from this quarter and I've got of course some big takeaways here sorry for the silly little bar graph thing on the picture but let's see if you can go through and read these with me uh, first off most Sony PVM and BVMs have increased in price exponentially I just showed you on the M series that was enough to throw in some good data where we had over a 30 percent price increase in a quarter and then other monitors that are going for just huge amounts of money are the 20-inch ones, especially a good 20-inch one. That means a 20M2, a 20M4, and definitely anything that's uh, higher quality than that. The best deals are still going to be your local sales, and that's because you're going to save anywhere from $150 to $200 plus on your shipping and freight charges, and you're also going to avoid the risk of having it damaged or destroyed. So just take that into consideration. If you find something that's local to you and you want to buy it, don't wait. Go ahead and get it because, again, somebody else will. Some people are driving. I was listening to people talk about driving 400-plus miles one direction just to get a, mo a monitor and then driving home. So, you know, people are doing desperate things to get them, especially if they're cheap. So if one comes available locally, that's the way to do it. Your best prices locally are going to be um, usually retro gamers that want to get rid of a monitor. They sell them for pretty decent to local people. And then, obviously, the still old school ways of trying to go out and um, hit up every local I instance of a, or every local industry that might still have had any of these in stock, whether that's some kind of medical facility or medical wholesale supplier or medical resupplier, reseller. And then, of course, anybody in the audio and video uh, industry that still would have these, okay? Good things come to those who are persistent and random. And what I mean by that is the, um, people are persistently checking on eBay every day, maybe twice a day for new listings. Uh, those are the ones who are getting the best deals. That's obvious. I mean, ran because random great deals are available. Like I said, we had some incredible deals where you had – a 14M for you go for $240 shipped. That's an incredibly random deal that somebody got on there. Um, some other incredibly good random deals would have been the $178 for a 1354Q. And of course, nearly all those Olympus, mod well, half the Olympus sales were incredible deals too because uh, people just aren't searching for that as much as the name known monitors like the Sony's uh, restored monitors are selling for more in a premium price and that's a good thing for me and Pat um, because that means we can still keep doing this and people still want to get them so that's actually a good thing that they are selling for more and it's a way for you to add value to your monitor if you go and buy one and you get it for cheap you think well if I can do what Steve's taught me or shown in any number of his videos on restoration if I can do that to my monitor it's going to instantly add three, four hundred dollars in value to the monitor, depending on which monitor it is easily. I've said this a few times, but supplies are still extremely limited on larger monitors and better monitors, and I don't see that changing. There's no um, place that is showing up with large amounts of stock anymore. And our friend, Mr. Nick, 
he, uh, who, you know, you've seen some of my episodes in the past about CRT sales, sales on eBay would have definitely involved the only shop, first watch, all those other names this guy was using to change up his store. Well, he's gone from eBay, so he's not even brought any monitors back to eBay. He must be running low or just holding on to his stock, which I doubt. I think it's more of him running out of monitors. Most top end monitors are not being shipped. Outside of like a 14 inch, most people are just not willing to ship those top end monitors, especially anything that's multi format and over 20 inches. Okay. Uh, and it's not a good idea to really do it. Even if you trust uh, your shipping company, uh, you're still going to be taking a risk no matter what. Be cautious about deals that are too good to be true because scams still do exist. And I've had people send it to me where Again, if something's listed and it's too good to be true and you're getting shady information from the seller or no information back when you message them, uh, don't feel bad if the sale's gone and you missed the deal because most likely it, it was something shady involved. Always check people's feedback. Uh, definitely check what else they have listed for sale. Make sure that it's not a bunch of uh, bogus-looking stuff. Uh, ask them if they... Do know how to pack it. There's nothing wrong with putting a message on there and saying, hey, how do you plan on packing my monitor? And uh, can I, you know, some people would even pack it better if you do that because they know you're paying attention. So those are just some quick tips. The last thing I do want to show you is Etsy because there are some PVMs and BVMs for sale on Etsy. And we just talked about our friend Nick. And I'm sure some of you will recognize these listings because they've all moved over here to Etsy. And Nick's over here slinging his wares on Etsy now. And so uh, these are just the monitors that he had listed at the time of this video. And uh, still super high prices. And I know that he doesn't pre-service these. He offers to take them to Save on Pat for you and let Save on Pat charge you more to to uh, fix them, which is fine for Pat, because, but you know, just so you know, these prices are going to be extremely high from him, and he didn't have much left. He had one 2005 still listed down here at the bottom, but there's our famous Sonic 2 picture, and here's just the last photo of his listing page, which I thought was kind of kind of, kind of funny here because uh, it's because it says a CZ, C, Sony PVM and BVM enthusiast, so. He's trying to remarket himself over here, which is fine on Etsy. I don't care. He's getting better feedback on here and kind of hit reset. So just know that that is what you're looking at for PVM and BVM sales. I will warn anybody that buys something on Etsy. I've gone over there like return policy and customer service policy. It's nothing like eBay's. So you're not nearly as guaranteed on, on the protection of your money. You'd have to pretty much rely on doing a PayPal transaction and again, I'm not sure um, whether there's a direct pay option. I've never even bought anything off of Etsy. So anyway, make sure you're familiarize yourself with the rules and know what risks you're taking when you use that. But that, folks, is our big time episode for Market Watch this month. And uh, so hopefully you can see just kind of what prices are doing and take some of those tips and try again. Don't be... Uh, in a rush um, to get one. If you find out about BVMs and PVMs, don't be in a huge rush to go buy one. Sit back, watch some of these things, because the worst thing you can do is get into a rush, pay, overpay for a monitor that's not as good as the price is asked, and then have a bad shipping disaster. And then all of a sudden, you've gone from something you really wanted and were enjoying to or try to enjoy to play, and it's it's just been messed up. Now uh, that's it for this episode. Hey, if you stayed with me at this point, please make sure you like and uh, you know subscribe and all that stuff to the channel. But if you have any experiences you want to share about sales, maybe you've bought in the last two months and you want to add it, please do so in the comments. Let us know, you know, how much did you pay? Did you feel like it was a good deal? How did you find the monitor? There are some other places to still find monitors. There's a Reddit page that has CRT listings and a CRT uh, enthusiasts page on there. There's a new Facebook page that's taken the name CRT Market Watch and put that on uh, as their name. So 
look for that group. They're sharing listings from all over the world in there. So you can look into exporting, uh, but remember export it's going to take longer usually, and then you're going to have to deal with tariffs depending on the negotiations between your governments of your country and the country you're taking it from. And so there will be a specific tariff uh, applied to the price, which could be high depending on how much you paid for a monitor, because there are a lot of good monitors that are multi-format and larger that are still available overseas. But again, leave me a comment. Let me know uh, what you think, whether you've had a good sale experience or anything like that. And guys, I'll see you all next time with some more retro content. Have a great day.